Smartcast.com. All right, a stunning <laughs> new example of media bias up next. Be smart. We're doing better in all of these states than we did on election night. Despite only negative publicity, only negative stories from the fakers back there. In Helsinki, I had a great meeting with Putin. They wanted me to walk up and go like this. They wanted me to go up and have a boxing match. President Trump again taking aim at the media as some members of the press continue to help him prove his point. There's no way anyone who knows Donald Trump, but is not bought, on, bought in in some way, could watch him last night and not come away with a feeling that the President of the United States is completely unhinged and getting worse by the day. Okay, Jesse, how is his rally last night different from any other rally? Like, I don't understand where she thinks all of a sudden something's different. I think he was so good she had to call him that okay. because I think she's <laughs> nice jealous. <spin. laughs> she's jealous because it takes a lot of talent to do what he does. To be able to read a crowd the way he does, it, it, it's not someone that's unhinged. It's someone that's so focused and so in tune to the crowd and their reaction, the timing, uh, the sensibility of the way your words are, are going over with the crowd, and uh, the way you perceive the crowd, and if they're you know, kind of losing patience or losing interest, to jolt them back at it. That takes timing, that takes precision. Not a lot of people are able to do that. So in order to discredit him, she can't discredit him on policy. She has to discredit him on his personality. And you know they don't have a very good personal relationship, so it's sour yeah. grapes. It, well, and it, it wasn't just personality. Take a listen to one more soundbite from that show. Is it okay? Yeah. It sounds like yeah. maybe he's got a, he's losing his mind. Is this a stability issue? Because I'm, I feel like some might argue when you see him off prompter, he doesn't really seem to be there. What do you he doesn't mean really that? connect with the reality of the situation. So, Greg, it's not the first time that um, questions have been raised. Um, and we understand yeah. you know, Omarosa has a book coming out in which apparently she yeah. says something similar about mental stability. Who's Omarosa? I'm not sure. Former assistant Come on, to the president. you know who that was. You know, uh, in regards to Mika, there's a, there's a, a pretty a good rule that you can always use. Um, boring people think interesting people are crazy. Mm -hmm. And by, comp I mean, she's uh, effectively boring. The only thing interesting about her is her last name, let's be honest. <laughs> so uh, I, and I can, I, and I think you can be harsh about her because she offers no medical evidence. She offers no, uh, had no medical expert there. She's not a doctor. To talk about somebody's stability, and, and, and by the way, in very serious tones, this isn't like, you know, when Trump says, you know, he, Bernie's crazy, Bernie's, he's, he's basically trash talking, you know, on the street. Mm -hmm. She's actually making a fairly serious accusation that could push someone to do, to, to like say, okay, my God, we have to do something about this president. He's dangerous. Yeah, like, the, was it the 25th Amendment or yeah, something yeah, yeah. like that? Um, Dagan, what, what do you make of it in terms of not responding on policy, but being frustrated with his uh, delivery? is what I guess she was upset about. Because, well, because everybody's lazy. They don't have to actually do any reading or understand anything about what's really going on in this country. You just come in and play like you're a psychiatrist in an right. airport kiosk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, again, what are these screeching, preening peacocks going to do when President Trump isn't in the White House anymore? They're going to go back to genuflecting and rump smooching <laughs> to get an invite to the White House Christmas party. It's embarrassing. My dad told me, and I think that this is playing out in America. When I first started working as a financial journalist about a quarter of a century ago, he <laughs> said, okay, honey, you are below repo men and <laughs> people who work in carnivals and IRS auditors in terms of pe how people distrust you and dislike you. So enjoy that the rest of your life. And I think that I, this is nothing new. I mean, yeah. People hate press and they Richard, just hate Richard, is it effective with Democrats though? No. <laughs> it's not. It's not effective with Democrats, but I think this, the, the pres I, I mean, I think Mika's just one, she's one outlier, right? I think this, the how we're in this conversation is because the president has basically made the media the punching bag. Uh, and, and I mean, he's called, he's called them the enemy of the state. He's called. Fake the, media. 
That'd be people, not state. <laughs> the enemy of the pe same difference, enemy of the people. Uh, and and I, I find that to be very problematic. I, go ahead, Jesse, I'm waiting for your pun. <laughs> <laughs> I find you problematic. <laughs> I find you problematic too, buddy. <laughs> but, I, I mean, the truth of the matter is there's a lot of people that go to the White House every day that do really good work and they're really good journalists and they don't deserve to be lumped in and called enemy of the people. You have people like Michelle Cinder at, the, at PBS, you have Abby Phillips at CNN. Good, you have our White House correspondents that are there that do good work every day. And even in their tweets are like, I mean, John Roberts is like, am I an enemy of the people too? And yeah. I think the president and the White House to be very careful about their rhetoric because they say they believe in the Constitution and the First Amendment enshrines well, doesn't the, the freedom press of the press. Doesn't the press have to be careful about their rhetoric as well? The job of the press is to ask tough questions to the White House, and Dana's been in that briefing room. No president. I think, I think we're, I think we're, con con I think yeah, we're conflating two things. in the briefing room and people that are angry yeah. and shows. Mika's not in the briefing people, room. Right. No, she's, uh, she's, she, uh, she's, well, she's like us. I mean, she has an opinion. Yeah. The thing is, though, there is something when you when you are saying that somebody is seriously mentally ill. It, uh, there are people who are mentally ill who are. It, it is just you don't play around with that terminology lightly. That's what I guess bugs me about it. All right, President Trump unveils his new nickname for Bernie Sanders, and will the Democratic divide upend the party's plans for the midterms? A fired up President Trump going after his theoretical 2020 rivals in Pennsylvania. Let's say I'm running against uh, Pocahontas. Or, or crazy Bernie. I tell you, I got to hand it to Bernie. I saw him up there the other day. That hair is getting whiter and whiter, and he's getting crazier and crazier. And that guy, he doesn't quit, and that's okay. Crazy Bernie. He is one crazy dude. <laughs> This comes as Democrats apparently cannot agree on a midterm message. Politico reporting progressives are meeting right now in New Orleans with plans to push the party toward impeaching him. Dana, is that a loser? What yes, it's a loser. Story? I actually pitched this today because I think that's that the, why I, the that's Democrats, why I went to you oh, first. Oh, thank you. Good, thank you. <laughs> um, I there are so many people working in the Democratic Party who are trying to figure, like the third way guys, even the DCCC, the DNC, Pelosi is saying, Pelosi says, we're not doing impeachment. We're not talking about it. We're not doing it. And there you have Tom Steyer, this billionaire, who's like, why isn't anybody taking me seriously? I was going to give you money. I want you to say impeachment. And they're like, please don't do that. I think that politics by these billionaires that are trying to influence the election, like Tom Steyer, it, it's not good. And then you have the, I, I should go to Richard on this, but they're frustrated with the Democrats because I think you haven't done enough to go after President Trump. I think that the Democrats do have time to figure out a midterm message. They have another month or so, get to Labor Day, and then they can drive it home, whatever they decide on that they're going to do. Um, turnout's really important. Turnout matters in this election more than any other. But if you don't have a good message, your turnout won't matter. So I have a couple things. I agree, turnout's very important. I think this, the talk of, I mean, so the net roots, they're talking, the, the, conference, the conference they're talking about is net roots. Mm -hmm. uh, net roots is very similar to CPAC. It's, you know, it, it's, yeah. it's activist. Uh, it's the far left, just like CPAC is the far right. Um, they have conversations. They come up with, you know, far left things. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think that's where the party's going to go. But I think it's an opportunity for us to, it's to rev up the party. It's to build the, mo the big mo, the big momentum. I think Democrats have a momentum going into this midterm election. Uh, I think the issue that we're going to come down to a boil down to for smart and I think we are uh, is going to be health care and here's why President Obama I mean President Trump promised repeal and replace mm -hmm. he didn't repeal he didn't replace and in October when they announced a new Obamacare premiums which are gonna be through the roof they're the one per the one party you can blame for that is the GOP uh, and I think Democrat I think Democrats are gonna run on the fact that health care is gonna be more costly and it's costly under Trump and that's a very potent argument uh, and so it's a real argument. So far, Jesse, that's not the case. The premiums are not coming in nearly as high, even have falling in yet. some states, but they've been reported at yeah. the state level because the insurance commissioners have been finding out. And then also you, you had this uh, initiative this past week in terms mm -hmm. of opening up the market and letting individuals buy short-term health plans, which are essentially against the law based on Obamacare rules, another rule that the Trump administration is rolling back. Again, you run on people's money, you're going to lose because the economy is so good. Yeah, there's more cheaper options now with health care after <laughs> President Trump came out with these deregulations. They're slowly chipping away at Obamacare, but then Trump's like lighting things on fire and the media's looking that way and he's zigging that way. It's, a, it's funny watching Bernie and Pocahontas, or he calls her Pocahontas. I can't imagine Trump ever losing a war of words against whoever the Democratic nominee is. There's no way Bernie Sanders is verbally equipped to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the president, 
I, I think po I shouldn't say Pocahontas, but I think Elizabeth Warren, Senator Elizabeth Warren, is quick with the Twitter. She's She's tight. She keeps it focused. <laughs> but I think verbally, she, she doesn't have what it takes. She doesn't have the charisma. She doesn't have the game. She As you say, she doesn't have crowd, the trash talking. I just haven't seen it. I don't think it can deliver. Neither of them are going to be the nominee, so, though. Well, if it's Biden. Joe Biden's going to be the nominee. Be the and, nominee? In the, and the most recent poll, Joe Biden was Joe Biden the most recent. Behind the gym here's the thing. And the, 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 here's the, thing. In the most recent poll, Joe Biden was up seven points against Donald Trump. A little early for polls. But here's the problem. Their platform is impatient. That's not true. Abortion and open borders. That's not that's true. A win, that, that's that's <laughs> that is a, not true. a winning yeah. trinity. Well, that's what we hear the most about. Every party has an angry fringe, right and left. But in the Dems, it's less of a fringe. It's the whole dress. Uh, but the party's going to have to pick a side. And, it, and, and one part of that party is going to be subservient to the other. So that's what you're going to see. I want to talk about the trash talking because I talked about how Mika was talking about the mentally ill. And you have Trump calling Bernie crazy. There's a key difference there. The trash talk, he's, he's giving uh, Bernie a nickname over his beliefs. The idea that he's a socialist right. in America is crazy. And it's always, it, 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 it's socialism is destructive practice that is chosen by incredibly rich people because they can survive it. All the rich, all the rich liberals in California, all the rich liberals in New York City, they can embrace a socialist candidate or, or, or a very social, a, a very liberal leaders because they're wealthy enough to sustain the, the punitive policies that nobody else can. That's crazy. And that street talking, he's trying to stick that to Bernie um, as opposed to actually saying he is clinically mentally ill and I worry about the state of the country. Can I just make, hey, one, can I just make one point? No, no Richard, you can't. You can't. No, you I'm kidding. Can't. <laughs> no, the one point I want to make is, is that we, we the, this, Demo, this De, Republicans get mad when we call them the party of the rich mm -hmm. because you guys, I'm not saying that you guys are the party of the rich. We get mad when you say we're open borders because we're, we, not, we aren't I open borders. I agree. Because Barack Obama spent a lot of money well, protecting the border. So stop saying we believe in open borders because it's just not true. Keith Ellison wore a t-shirt that says, I don't believe in That's borders. That's one person he's that is not the entire party. party. Well, he's the number no, two. No, he's not. Here's, yes, he is. Here's what Nancy. we do keep hearing. <laughs> Medicare for all. Medicare already is going broke That's, in eight years. Medicare for all is going to be $33 trillion. We would have to double the amount of money that we take from the American people in terms of taxes, and it still wouldn't pay for it. That's crazy. But you're not going to pay health care premiums anymore. One crazy dude. Uh, <laughs>